What's up there everyone? So, this kind of videos are never easy for me to make or to record or to talk about, uh, you know, this topic, suicide. It's been, you know, some of you might know a bit more about my past, but it's, it's a topic, it's something that I struggled with for a lot of years in the past. Uh, but that doesn't mean even though, you know, I do professional work around mental health, I study psychology, uh, I worked at the suicide line, I volunteered there. Even though I do all those things, it doesn't mean that it's easy for me to talk about this, you know, about the experience that I had with suicide. It's a heavy topic. Um, yeah, it's a heavy topic. I'm okay with feeling uncomfortable and putting myself in a vul vulnerable place. If I can, you know, even at least help one person with this video uh, to do something about these thoughts. So I'm actually gonna provide in this video 13 in total pieces of advice when I, you know, look back at all these years now that I've sort of worked on myself. When I look back now at what really helped me, that's what I want to try to provide in this video for you. Because... It's tough, right? It's really tough when you are in or when you walk around with these thoughts and when you're stuck in this hole, in this dark hole that you just can't seem to get out of. You can get out of it. And for everyone, this journey is going to be very different. You know, the way how I got out of this hole, out of these thoughts is going to be very different for you. But there are some general pieces of advice like this ones that I'm going to provide in this video that I do believe can be of great help to anyone almost. An extra thing that I have to add to this is that these are 13 pieces of advice or, or ways that have helped me, which doesn't mean, of course, that all of them are going to be as helpful for you. Another thing that I would like to add before we dive into the video, I guess it matters in a way for me to go through my whole past and to explain, you know, why uh, I got to these thoughts. But... Uh, I created uh, some months ago another video on how to help someone who has suicidal thoughts. And I went very in-depth there and explained it very in-depth there. And I would, you know, if you're more interested into the full story on how I got into that, into those thoughts, because I use my own personal story as an as a way to to examine how someone can fall into this hole. So if you're interested in that uh, to know more on how I got into these thoughts, then I would say check out that video. But also additionally to that, knowing more about just suicide, about the topic, and on how to help someone else, uh, as weird as it may sound if you're struggling with these thoughts, knowing how these thoughts can start to happen can greatly help uh, to understand yourself and where you are right now. Because to me, it always felt like such a confusing thing and it is a really confusing thing. So many things lead to the development of this thought, lead to eventually the plans and ultimately to, you know, even committing suicide or attempting it. There's so much behind it. The build-up, there's so many things happening there. And uh, in that video, which is almost an hour long, I go very in-depth and explain things there. That video uh, you can find in the description down below. Uh, in this video, I don't want to talk too much, you know, uh, about just information and theoretical things. I actually want to get very practical in this video. It, for me, always is a very helpful thing. Because it means also, if you get practical, that there is something that you can do right now. That's the main goal of this video. To actually show you that there are ways, that there are things that you can do uh, to, to, yeah, eventually live a life. Um, where you're not constantly walking around with these thoughts and a life free from it. Let's start with the first one. When you walk around with suicidal thoughts, it is extremely, extremely helpful to get out of your head and to get into your body. When you're constantly thinking, it really, I mean, it, literally, you can, you can get yourself into a depression by overthinking, by 
thinking constantly and worrying constantly. And this is not about, you know, starting to to suppress these thoughts or, or trying to run away from them. Uh, it's nothing of that. Getting into your body is rather to be able to have time to breathe and to stop thinking and to just be. I want to provide now three ways that I found to be extremely helpful to be in my body and to be less in your head. So the first one is to spend more time in nature. And with more, I don't mean just a little bit. I mean like a lot more, you know, spend a lot more time in nature. In Japan, they have, I don't know, they have a, a Japanese word for it, which I will not be able to pronounce, so I'm not going to try it. Uh, but it's translated uh, to forest bathing. I think just if you are not feeling alive, then go out into nature and just sit somewhere and observe the life around you. If you don't feel alive, watch other life forms. Just do their thing and I can guarantee you the feeling what you will feel is the feeling of feeling alive again, the feeling of wonder, the feeling of awe, the feeling of amazement about life. If you just can be able to observe you know, the smallest things happening around you, some f some bird flying around, some insects doing their things, a duck swimming around, s simple things. But if you can observe just nature or just see the wind pass through trees and just be there out of your head, into your body. And I actually made a vlog where I went through that technique because it's kind of a technique, sort of a mindfulness technique, I would say. Uh, but in that vlog, I went through it uh, with uh, an example, actually. And I'm just going to run that piece or that part from the vlog. I'm aware of the world being alive. So that the world is moving all the time. And the way to do this, it's sort of a meditation practice. You just sit down somewhere and look at, you know, just one scene and look at one thing that is moving and just Keep your attention on that for a couple of seconds. And then when your eyes catch something else that's moving, follow that or look at that for a couple of seconds. And then when something else is moving, put your attention on that and look at that for some seconds. And what this technique actually teaches you is that the world is alive. It's moving all the time there's a million of things going um, around a million of things that are alive and um, if you are not feeling within you alive knowing that the rest of the world is alive can actually help you feel alive as well so that vlog i can actually recommend the whole vlog to watch it because i share some other uh, i would say helpful things um just random things that actually came up when I was uh, there uh, camping wild in, in the forest. Uh, so I will actually provide or put that uh, video down below in the description of this video. Along with that, I would also say spending more time with animals. If I go for a walk with, you know, my dog, she doesn't have to do anything, you know, anything at all. She just have to look at me and I'm already smiling, you know, I'm when I feel not good or sad and I would just look at her you know and she would do nothing else but look at me the the, the warmth that I just feel from her from that being it's immense like it, it she can instantly make me happy without doing anything special but just look at me and many animals have that actually that kind of you know thing where they're just uh, just being in the presence of an animal uh, because they're so in the moment, they're so present, you will also become more present when you actually would, yeah, um, play with them or, or sort of help them or work with them or something. Go somewhere and maybe, I mean, yeah, if you can do some dock sitting, for example, I think that's a great thing. Uh, or if you can go outside uh, and just be somewhere with some animals around you, it's always such an amazing thing. Uh, or if you have an animal at home yourself, spend more time with it. Just, you know, be there more with your cat or with your dog or with your bunny or whatever animal that you have. Or go out to a farm and help the other animals or go to the zoo or something. Yeah, it's nice uh, to observe animals and to be more in their presence. 
So the other one that I have is to work out, to exercise, to move your body. And here I would actually recommend to to do an exercise where it's very intense in a way. Um, like for example, climbing, I would say. You really have to be in the moment, in the, in, you know, in the present to climb. Uh, it's very hard to not be in the, in, in the moment kind of when you're climbing because there's such a high amount of focus, there's such an amount of adrenaline going through you that you're so much in the moment. Um, but other things could be like going, you know, running, for example, or to go kayaking or biking, but maybe more on difficult trails so somewhere where you have to think not so much, but actually be really focused uh, there in the moment um, or doing some kind of fighting sport or something just to get into your body and to get out of your head. And again, the goal or the thing, the reason is to have time to breathe and to not be constantly, you know, in your head thinking about these thoughts all the time. So a last one that I have on this uh, topic of getting out of your head and into your body is to work with your hands, like do some kind of craftsmanship, to do woodworking, to do painting, to do gardening. I wouldn't suggest with this actually to play an instrument. Maybe drums could be different, but mainly why I'm saying to not play an instrument is because, you know, when I feel sad and I go to my piano or my guitar, I actually also play sad stuff. I play sad songs and it actually doesn't make the situation per se better. I still feel sad afterwards. Most people do that. When they feel sad, they will also play something sad uh, on an instrument. Therefore, when I mean work with your hands, I mean something more neutral, like woodworking, making a chair, you know, for example, or metalworking or gardening, something neutral where you are just busy with your hands. And this was a quote, I don't know from who, but uh, one that always has been stuck in my head, busy hands, quiet minds. It's important to be able to quiet your mind and to have ways to quiet it when things get too intense. So going over now to the second thing, the second part you could say, is to change your views uh, about life and about yourself. So the first one is books, podcasts, documentaries, and workshops. The average five people you spend the most time with really will start to determine your look and your thoughts and everything, you know, how you look at life and uh, how you feel about yourself. Change the five people you spend the most time with to people that can help you be a better version of yourself. Someone who can, you know, who has a positive look on life. Books, podcasts, documentaries and workshops. Those are great ways to start to change the people that you spend the most time with. With podcasts, for example, uh, the Tim Ferriss Show, I could highly recommend you to check that podcast out. Uh, really changed my view about life and myself on being uh, with Krista Tippett. Amazing podcast that did the same. And then, I mean, well, the IPS uh, podcast, which is the podcast that I host uh, for the IPS project. Just the people that I interview on there are all people who are um, sharing things to better your life, to better educate you about a certain topic and about yourself and to help you just broaden your view about you and life. Yeah, those three podcasts I would really recommend when you actually consciously spend time with others. Uh, then all these thoughts that you have inside you, all those negative thoughts that you might have about you, will start to also become different ones because of these people that you spend time with. And I would actually recommend with the podcasts to, you know, go through the lists of episodes and to select the ones that have to do with something that you're currently struggling with. For example, with suicidal thoughts or, you know, if it's something else with relationship problems or with depression or loneliness, I would actually recommend that because it's so healing to listen to the pains of other, the experience that other people had going through painful moments 
and how they got out of it and what they learned from it. It's such a healing thing and it's such a helpful thing because it doesn't make you feel alone, right? It makes you feel like there's other people who also struggle and who have found their way out of it. Then in terms of books, I can highly recommend actually The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, um, The Road Less Traveled by Scott M. Peck and Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Franklin. I would say those three books have probably changed me the most and helped me the most to deal with suicidal thoughts. In the description of this video, I will provide a little description of each book. Uh, but The Power of Now is basically an incredible book to learn how to be more in the present. The Road Less Traveled is... I don't know, it's just a great book about life and some great life philosophies and about relationships and about your own self-image. And then uh, Man's Search for Meaning uh, is an incredible book about meaning, finding meaning in life and in your suffering. And uh, yeah, Viktor Franklin has an incredible story uh, too. He is a Holocaust survivor and has lived through horrible times uh, and the book there goes about his experience living in a Nazi's concentration camps and um, yeah surviving it and then to go over to documentaries I would really recommend actually to watch uh, nature documentaries for example uh, planet earth 2 I think you know every time you just watch it an episode you're so marveled by the amazement about life uh, and about the animals that we have, it really makes you feel like uh, this world is, is magical. And it is actually. When you are having suicidal thoughts, when you're stuck there with these thoughts, you don't feel that anymore, the magic in life. And therefore I feel like, yeah, watching documentaries can be a really amazing way to get some feeling of magic again. And to just see it again, to show like, yes, there is incredible stuff out there. So Planet Earth 2 uh, and then Blue Planet 2, actually, uh, I would really recommend that documentary too, which is just so amazingly filmed. And then I have uh, workshops and mainly workshops are such incredible ways to, to do something that might interest you. Like, for example, I did a writing retreat in Switzerland years ago and you immediately also get placed with like-minded people who also like what you like or UPW in London so unleash the power within with Tony Robbins I honestly would say uh, it's four days but I honestly would say I mean for anyone who is depressed and I did it uh, not too long ago not when I was feeling depressed or suicidal but just because I wanted to do it once in my life but I would say for someone who is depressed or is struggling with suicidal thoughts that event those four days they can truly actually change you most people have a high rate of stress in their brain they go there so often they know exactly how to get there stress anger worry sadness and they have a dirt road to happiness. We're building a highway to fucking happiness, a highway to certainty right now. The environment that you're placed in is an incredible environment, a perfect environment for actually some real things uh, to happen in you and to get out and uh, to have people around you to actually work through it even. With each work workshop, I always ended up meeting such amazing people I always ended up learning so much about myself. If you, you are walking around with suicidal thoughts, I really know it can be a healing place. If it can be some kind of workshop to do with maybe some, some kind of self-development like UPW, Unleash the Power Within, or some kind of yeah yoga or mindfulness retreat or something to do with mindfulness. And I'm just giving a suggestion out, of course, right? But workshops are amazing things uh, to do to get some real healing from you know it's often said that laughter is the best medicine right there are so many health benefits to it like it can really like it can dramatically increase your longevity just by laughing more doing something as pleasant as that you can increase your longevity but as well like it is an amazing way to combat depression or feelings of suicide because you can't feel sad or angry 
when you're laughing. Comedians are one of the best ways, I would say, to um, yeah, to start laughing and to have that more in your life. And on Netflix, there are so many comedy specials on there uh, from people like Trevor Noah, for example, is someone that I think is an hilarious comedian, uh, or Ricky Gervais is also a great comedian. Taylor Tomlinson, I might pronounce her last name there wrong, uh, but she's also amazing. And then Daniel Sloss, he's also a great comedian. All four of them are on Netflix, and just, these are just some, some comedians that I just think of right now that I really liked. Uh, but they all have Netflix specials, and they're just hum there's there's just so many more on Netflix. But also, what what works really well is to watch TV shows like Friends, for example, or The Big Bang Theory, or How I Met Your Mother. Those are also great shows, actually. That really, when I feel down or not as good, and I just watch uh, an episode from Friends, I it lights up my day so much. I have so much to thank to traveling and I mean I have my whole life to thank to it because it really once I was 18 allowed to leave school you know because it was through 12 to 18 those years that I was constantly walking around with suicidal thoughts when I was 18 allowed to leave school I took the first chance and I left off to South Africa and you know what initially was meant to be just two months ended up in a three-year journey around the world. That journey, those three years, really were for me a three-year journey of healing, of just healing, and of rediscovering the world, and of rediscovering myself. And that's what traveling does. It puts you in another place, in another culture, uh, <clears throat> where things are different. There's so many possibilities in life, and traveling has showed that to me. Because in those three years, I did so many different jobs from working on a farm, from being a park ranger, from uh, helping a, an old lady at her house the whole time, from painting, from working at a mechanic, uh, from just so many things. I did so many different jobs when I was traveling during those three years around the world. And it helped to broaden my just view on the things that you can do in life and the people that are out there, the amazing people that are out there. I think volunteering, why I sort of added that in here is that's also a great way actually of sort of traveling. When I was 18, I went to South Africa for two months. That was actually a volunteering project where I went to help build a school in South Africa uh, in one of the townships. I also went off to Borneo um, to, uh, I worked there as a, a diver. Uh, to rebuild corals. Volunteering can be another great way of sort of getting out into the world and sort of traveling, but being more, you know, you know where you're going, you know what you're gonna do. Volunteering can be expensive in a way, right? There is a website called Helpix or Workaway where you work in exchange for accommodation and food. And the website, the membership costs maybe like 20 euros or, or something like that. And then it's basically like volunteering. Like I've worked like that as a park ranger uh, in, a, in a kangaroo park in Australia. So that's a great alternative actually if you don't have the financial, you know, um, needs. Check Workaway or Helpix. Um, there's amazing projects on there. As you can see, this is gradually going more deeper and deeper, you know from getting out of your head into your body to uh, changing your view by you know traveling the world for example to now actually being there for yourself as someone who studies psychology uh, as someone who works as a therapist i am not just saying this uh, just to say it i'm actually saying this because i know it to be true and also as someone who actually went to therapy I know the effects of therapy sometimes the people around us as as great and as loving they are and as much as they want to be there for you um, they're not always the right people you know to help us 
often they don't even know how to actually be there for us. Uh, or they might not even approach us. That that's sort of that was the case for me. That no one around me, even though people knew something was wrong, no one around me came up to me and told me like, "Hey, you know, is something wrong? Can I be there for you?" No one ever did that. Often that's the case or the reason because they don't know what to do, so they just don't do anything. If you can go to a therapist who is specialized in a certain therapy, and I would actually recommend CBT, so Cognitive Behavior Therapy, which is an evidence-based therapy. I actually made on the IPS project a couple of videos on how to find a good therapist. Often people are sort of stopped to go to a therapist because of some misconceptions about it. So those were two videos, for example, that I made on the IPS project that I will put in the description of this video. But CBT therapy is a very short-term therapy that is very focused uh, on actually changing your thoughts or your behavior and actually doing something right now about what is going on. The reason why I just said therapist first is because they're the profession they're professionals like they know how to talk about this they know how to be there for you you know when you're going to a therapist first you can also discuss with them how you can start to talk about this with friends and family for some yeah it's a quite a difficult thing actually to to get this out to say that you're struggling with these thoughts and having someone there with you like a therapist to guide you through this process is extremely helpful. This is probably such a piece of advice that's always shared, you know, the first one that I shared of therapy and then this one now of, you know, going to friends or family and to just say this. Once you're able to say it to one person or two, you know, and you actually see, you know, if it's someone that you can trust and you actually see the reaction, it's not gonna be as bad as you know, mostly, right? Uh, as bad as you think it is going to be. Most people truly want to be there for you. And they truly, they might be shocked, right? But if they care, they will listen. If they care, they will tell you, I care and I'm here for you. So if they care, you should not be scared to eventually share this. But if you can share it, and if you do share it, the amount of weight, because I really remember the first time that I said it and told someone this, which was my ex-girlfriend, but the amount of weight that just falls from your shoulders, that you don't have to carry this alone anymore, it's tremendous. And over the years now, I've been more open about this. I mean, very open, right, to even make a video and put it on YouTube. But I've been more open about it um, with my friends, like all of them, basically, like my close friends know this. And yeah, they're all so supportive. You just have to take my word on this. Try to share it with someone that you trust and that you know might understand you. And when you do, life will feel a lot more, well, a lot better um, and a lot less heavy. So the last one that I want to share here on, you know, how to be there for yourself is something that I call the big five. And it includes uh, water, food, exercise, and then no drugs and alcohol. I mean, alcohol is drugs, but you know, and then sleep. The big five, those five things there, if you could start eventually later on when you feel you've more moved through the other you know, other stages, you can say, of what I've shared here in this video. Those five, if you can later on fine-tune them much more in your life, really has helped in the stability of my life and the stability of my well-being, my own thoughts and everything and not letting me fall back steps down to that hole where I was stuck in with those thoughts. Sleep is so important. It's so essential for your well-being, right? And with that for combating these feelings of suicides, of suicidal thoughts. Uh, but as well, you know, having right liquids in your body. Water is essential uh, to drink enough water, to have the right food, the right root nutrients in your body, to not eat fast food. It also increases depression if you eat fast foods 
a lot in your life and exercise you know it's it's so good for your body to work out and to move your body needs that and then you know drugs including alcohol to reduce that as much as you can uh, alcohol is something that quite a lot of people go to when they're going through a very hard time as it's an it's a way to escape right it's a way to escape and to to sort of cope with all these emotions and yes yeah people struggling with suicidal thoughts can easily go and grab uh, to alcohol i don't know if that's something that you do and i know it's not just gonna be you know that you're gonna stop doing it by me saying this but it's not helpful to these thoughts it actually contributes to the thoughts this is something that i would say is more something that once you feel that you have grip on these thoughts and and sort of a way of navigating through life better and you have some stability that you should start to focus on those as well because they really will help your life uh, to make it so much better. So this last one, yeah, is the last one because of a reason, because it's also the most difficult one, I would say, for most to find. If you can actually at some point feel like there is a meaning to your life and a purpose why you're here, then you've really achieved the ultimate, I would say. If you look at the happiest people in the world and you look at their secret, you could say, it's all people who have a strong, they know why they're here. They know their meaning and their purpose in life. If I look now where I am today and, you know, I'm, I'm at a good place. I'm at a very happy place in my life that I find, like, I, I enjoy life which is something that I would have never imagined to say, to be honest. My work really gives me meaning. My study in psychology really gives me meaning. Another reason why I also put it at the end here is because I also would say, you know, it's the end sort of stage to get to. Um, but don't try to, per se, focus at it too much. I would say do everything that I shared before and, yeah, just do them in your life. And many of them actually will eventually also help you in finding a purpose and a meaning for being here. You know, reading books, listening to podcasts, going traveling, uh, being more in your body instead of your head. You know, these are all ways in how you can better, you know, discover yourself and who you are. I'm so happy and so glad that you are watching this video and... You know, I really, really hope that from everything that I shared, that there's something in there that can eventually, well, help you at least a little bit to get out of this hole that you're in, but also eventually lead you to this final stage of having a meaning and a purpose in your life. That's honestly everything here uh, that, I sh that I wanted to share. And I don't want to give you the wrong impression now that I am not that I'm always happy or something or that I don't have bad days or that I don't have days where the thoughts might just enter my mind like the thought of suicide or, or just you know it's it's been such a long you know time a part of my life that it's pretty normal that it could enter my head right especially you know when something has been a long time a part of your life but it's not it's not there dominantly it's not there every minute where it was that uh, in the past uh, it was there every minute. Maybe you have that right now, that you're thinking about suicides all the time. There, there can be a day where that's not the case anymore. There can be a day like that. Also, you know, let's be here for each other. You're not alone in this. You really are not alone in this. If I can be here for you, just leave a comment in the comment section down below. If it can help you, just write out your story. And I really, with especially this video, I wanna be there very actively uh, in the comments. And uh, yeah, be there as well for you. So if there's something more that you wanna get out, just put it out there in the comment section below. And uh, I will I will try to add some more support to you. Or if you have any other tips or, or pieces of advice that have helped you maybe, you're very welcome to put it down below in the comment section. Um, yeah, it would be great if we could also make this a video where we can support each other. There are people out there who, you know, 
made episodes, podcast episodes to help you. There are people who wrote books to help you. Go and seek those episodes and those books and let other people be there for you. Because you deserve it. And your life deserves it too. It can be so much better than it is right now. So, yeah.